Alolan Raichu got Thundershock? What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video we are going to cover the new PvP update that Pokemon Go has just dropped. There is a lot of information here, and it is shaking up the meta when it comes to the Sinister Cup, so you guys definitely want to take a look at what is going on. Alright, so diving right into the update that Pokemon Go has launched, if you guys want to check out this for yourself, there's going to be a link down in the description to that, but it is on the PokemonGoLive.com website. The first thing they've addressed is they're trying to address under tapping, um, which is a big part of the game. There's definitely skill to it, but not having to under tap in order to successfully get off your charge attack before the enemy could be a very good thing. So that's what this is talking about. Now there's a lot of move updates, so this is going to take a little while going through it, but let's start things off. Bubble Beam. Bubble Beam will now have a reliable attack buff, which decreases an opponent's Pokemon's attack stat by one stage. So it's basically every time you get off a of Bubble Beam, you're going to lower the opponent's attack stat. So this could see a lot of play come in um, with Pokemon that we really haven't used before. But one of them that I think might start rising to the top is definitely going to be Mantine. Um, as you guys know, we used it for the Rainbow Cup a lot. Uh, so he could be a big player now. Power Up Punch, and you guys know what Power Up Punch does, but what they wanted to stray away from, according to this, is the damage that it does. So, the damage of Power Up Punch will be decreased in order to help Pokemon that can't learn Power Up Punch to play differently from another using their other attacks for damage. So, the purpose of Power Up Punch is to raise the stats of the Pokemon, not so much become an on, like an out of control move. So a Medicham before, or a Polyrath or something who had three or four stages of Power Up Punch, that Power Up Punch now is doing tons of damage. So they're wanting to stray away from that and make it a self buff so that your other moves hit hard. Ideally your fast move and your other charge moves. So this is now becoming more of a shield bait move instead of a reliable damage move. Psychic. Psychic will now deal more damage and usable sooner in gym, raid, and trainer battle. So they're giving a buff to Psychic. They're increasing the damage and lowering the energy cost. Um, this rework is intended to make Psychic a more viable Psychic type attack in both raids and trainer battles. Um, trainers now also have the chance to decrease an opponent's um, a defense stat when the move is used in trainer battles. So now there's a chance Psychic got a, a damage boost and an energy lowering. So this could be, depending on what the numbers are, this could be a fantastic new move. And on top of that, it has a chance to lower the Pokemon's defense when you use it. So that's going to be an incredible move depending on what Pokemon it is on. But looking at this, we might see Metacham convert from a full-time counter user to a Psychic user. Maybe with Psycho Cut and Psychic? Who knows, you know? Depends on the meta, but that'll be really interesting. Snarl. So this is a big one, guys. Snarl has been updated to have a clear energy generation role among the dark type fast attacks. So what I'm guessing what this means is Snarl is going to become something like Mudshot or Thundershock that we know about. Um, so they want this to help Pokemon like Arcanine and Luxio who have important charge attacks before feigning. Um, as well giving more defensive Suicune and Umbreon more frequent access to their charge attacks. So if Snarl turns into something like Mudshot, this could kind of get out of control by having something that's so bulky and then spamming, spamming a lot. That's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Um, more attacks will also be coming to Pokemon Go. Thunder Fang, an electric type fast attack. Arcanine, Steelix, Mightyena, and Hippowdon are going to get it. Ice Fang, an ice type attack. Suicune, Mightyena, Mawile, Hippowdon, and Drapion are going to get that. So this is pretty interesting. Steelix getting Thunder Fang. That's a really interesting move. I'm not sure how much damage it's going to do. I'm guessing it's going to be very small. It's not going to be something like a wild charge or anything like that. 
but it could provide some unique coverage based on the meta that you're in. Steelix possibly being able to handle something like a Azumarill or something, that could be really interesting. Mawile, however, getting Ice Fang, that'll be, that'll be definitely interesting. All right, moving down. This is where the craziness really starts to happen, guys. Alolan Raichu is gonna get Thundershock. This fast attack will allow Alolan Raichu to surf its way to faster charge attacks and help it make up for its light defenses. This is kind of ridiculous. So Alolan Raichu was already amazing because it could spam Thunder Punch, Wild Charge, has access to Grass Knot and Psychic. But now you're giving it Thundershock, so this thing is gonna become a spam monster. It's basically what Legacy Magneton was with the spam that it provides, but it has better coverages. So this is, this is really interesting. Alolan Sand Slash gets Ice Punch. So, all right, we haven't used Alolan Sand Slash too much. We do see another Charm user coming in. Alolan Ninetales is gonna get Charm, so that'll be interesting to play with. Something that low key may start becoming good, guys, is Golduck gets Bubble Beam, Synchronize, and Cross Chop. So this adjustment to its move pool could provide some unique play depending on what cup you're participating in because Golduck does have Confusion and then you could have Bubble Beam and Cross Chop. This could provide a ton of coverage. Synchronize as well. Lolan Marowak is going to get more fire moves. So we're gonna see it get Fire Spin as a fast attack and Flame Wheel as a charge attack. So Fire Spin's pretty viable, guys, depending on how you wanna play it. It's got good energy gain and it has good damage. Flame Wheel, on the other hand, not so hot, um, but Fire Spin definitely could be, especially for the Sinister Cup, could be a great mix-in. Mantine getting Bubble Beam. Yep, this is what I talked about earlier. Mantine's gonna get a Bubble Beam and that is could cause it to be a huge threat. Guaranteed lowering of the attack of the, yeah, the attack of the enemy. Mawile, getting Fire Fang, Ice Fang, and Power Up Punch. So, Mawile is a decent pick for the Sinister Cup because of its move, fast move of Bite, but now it's going to have Fire Fang, Ice Fang, and Power Up Punch. So, this thing could be a huge threat, especially if you Power Up Punch to increase Bite's damage um, against a Pokemon that you, you, know, you can just beat with Bite. This could get out of control, and then having good coverages with Fire Fang and Ice Fang. Fire Fang for Steelix, Ice Fang for Drifblim. Oof. Weavile is gonna get Snarl. Um, Snarl allows Weavile to hold its own, but it's fragile. Um, dark Attack against Team Go Rocket, Raid Bosses, and Master League opponents. So, Weavile is gonna get Snarl. It's gonna be able to spam way more, so I imagine this is gonna be really great for raiding. Um, you're gonna have higher energy gain to get to charge moves, but I'm not sure how it's gonna do in Great League, um, because Weavile, um, it hasn't been really relevant at all because it's so fragile, but yeah guys This is the Pokemon Go PvP update So be sure to check it out and be sure to head over to pvpoke.com if we head there now actually, Let's take a look how the rankings have adjusted for the Sinister Cup So Alolan Marowak still number one, but Fire Spin seems to be put at as the best Fast attack. Hex is still Hex is still up there, but I'm guessing because against Steelix with Fire Spin. Oh man, yeah, you can win that. Oh, you can win pretty good. You can win the one shield and the two shield with a Fire Spin Alolan Marowak versus a Steelix. Now Steelix is now number two. Haunter, Bastiodon, Driftblum. These guys are still up there. But what I want you guys to notice is Polyrath and Metajam aren't up here anymore. So Polyrath is, Metacham's 27, did I scroll past Polyrath? Polyrath is now 17, where before Polyrath was uh, 10, I believe, and Metacham was right there as well. But, oof, I think they took a hit because of the power up punch damage. I think he definitely took a hit because of that. So that's pretty interesting. Metacham dropping all the way down to 27. Oh, that's rough. It's still going to beat the Pokemon that it needs to, but yeah, very interesting. Definitely a good shakeup. Lolan Raichu's there as well. Definitely a good shakeup for the meta guys. 
it's going to be interesting how people run the Alolan Marowak, whether they go for Hex to lock down or do more damage against the Ghosts and Psychics, or they go for Fire Spin for Steelix. So, very interesting indeed. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I hope you guys found it informative, so be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this new PvP update. What Pokemon are you guys excited to test out? Or what Pokemon are you guys dreading to try to TM? Because we have had new moves added to the game and we haven't had an update to the TM system. So if someone at Niantic or anyone is watching this who has affiliation with them, please let them know. TMs need to be as a set place for us to be able to choose what move we get because it is actual chaos to try to get the correct move when it comes to Pokemon Go PvP, especially for Pokemon like Togekiss, who has all of those elemental type moves and you're just trying to get charm. Like you'll go through 20 TMs just to try to land charm. So the system for TMs is obviously broken and it needs to be fixed. So hopefully Niantic will address that in some way, shape or form. But like always guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.